Hello, good morning. Happy Friday. Hope everyone's staying dry out there. Um, it's really nice to see you all for this Friday's Facebook Live. Um, our theme today is Sober October. My name is Julie Yerkes, and I'm the Community Engagement Lead for the Partnership at Drug Free New Hampshire. And we're doing these Facebook Lives every Friday in October, um, which is such a prevention-packed month, right? Last week, we discussed bullying prevention with the New Hampshire Teen Institute. Uh, today, we're talking about Sober October. And coming up, we have Red Ribbon Week and Drug Take Back Day. So we hope that you'll join us for them all. And actually, let us know if you're listening, watching, um, and you know, let us know where you're at. And um, any questions you have or any comments, we'd love to kind of get your take on this and if you have any thoughts about Sober October. You know, so Sober October is actually new to me. Um, you know, dry January is something I've known about for a long time. And Julianne was just telling me about a whole host of other sober opportunities, um, sober until October um, from August and, you know, September. Um, other friends that are, are, you know, do it from, um, I think, Thanksgiving to St. Patrick's Day. Um, you know, so th this is such a, a wonderful um, new, I guess, you know, uh, trend, not trend, but, you know, new way of uh, taking care of ourselves and, 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 and being mindful around um, substance use and how we're approaching um, something that is such a common part of, of society, you know, you know, especially alcohol use um, and, and increasingly marijuana use. Um, so, um, you know, I love this, I, the Sober October, um, you know, it's, it's at the end of the summer, you know, summer is often filled with outdoor parties and vacations and beach and relaxation, you know, horseshoes and grilling and, you know, and a lot of those are accompanied by um, uh, alcohol and, and other substances. So October is the changing of the seasons, you know, time to start new habits, time to kind of reframe. And so I really like it, um, even though it's kind of new to me. Um, so normally we have a guest on here to, to talk that I talk to, um, today we're going to switch things around a little bit. And, um, uh, my colleague Julianne here is going to ask me some questions. And so it'll just be the two of us having this conversation and we hope that you'll chime in. Um, you know, I do want to say that I am a certified prevention specialist. Um, I am a middle-aged women, um, you know, a, a mom, a, a daughter, a wife. Um, I am not a licensed drug and alcohol counselor. I am not a medical doctor. And so um, the um, what we talk about today is coming from a prevention and a harm reduction lens. Um, this is not um, medical advice. Um, if somebody has a um, substance use disorder, um, if you want to um, you know, if your dependence is such that when you try to stop drinking, you have withdrawal symptoms um, and you get sick, you need to seek medical advice. Um, and you can call 911 for immediate um, assistance. Um, if you want to seek assistance ahead of time and, and find resources, um, and maybe Julianne, you could chat this in um, the comments, but there is, um, 211 New Hampshire, which has a number of resources available um, to help um, individuals seek um, assistance um, for um, themselves or others. And then we have the doorways um, as well, um, which is uh, you can find through 211 as well. So I just wanted to make that, you know, say that at the beginning that this is really um, from a prevention and harm reduction standpoint and not um, a treatment. Um, standpoint. Um, so, Julianne, thanks for joining me today and being here <clears throat> and participating in this conversation with me. Good morning. Say hi. <laughs> My name is Julianne. I work with Julie over at the partnership, and I'm going to be asking her some questions about Sober October. And I think I have um, a little bit of a different perspective on it too, because I am somebody in my mid 20s. Um, so, I'm noticing more and more people my age jumping in on things like sober October, or sober till October, or just taking a break from alcohol in general for their health or for whatever their own personal reasons. Um, but what is sober October really, Julie? Yeah, thanks. 
Well, I just had to learn about it. So it's actually started in the UK as a fundraising effort for a cancer center. Um, so, um, and the term, you know, it, it rhymes, it's pretty catchy. Um, so I think it's been adopted here in the US and in other places as a time and opportunity to take a break um, from using substances. Um, but yeah, it started as this fundraiser in the UK and um, you know, that connection with cancer <clears throat> is good because you know, substance use does have uh, increased risk for, uh, for cancer. Um, so uh, I like that connection as well, that it's um, health benefits. It's really um, by raising money for cancer, you're also um, helping um, prevent your own you know, um, illnesses. So um, yeah, that's what, where it started. So I see there's a lot of emphasis on taking a break. Um, why do you think there is more emphasis on taking a break versus maybe cutting out alcohol altogether? Yeah, like that sober curious. Um, well, <clears throat> I think that in our, you know, we, we think about this, you know, at, at my age, um, when we thought about somebody, you know, in um, when I was younger, it was an alcoholic, right? Um, uh, now it's a, we have some other um, terms that we would use, a person with an alcohol use disorder or a person um, with a substance use disorder. Um, you know, there was a stigma around that and a, a picture of what that looked like. Um, and it didn't look like a lot of, you know, it didn't look like um, what most people would consider um, problem drinking or having a, um, a dependence on on alcohol. So I think this is a great way for to um, open up taking a break for all people, right? Whether you identify as um, somebody who has a problem um, with alcohol use um, or um, some or uh, other substances, you know, it just kind of opens it up saying, this isn't saying you have to quit forever, but this is an opportunity to take a, a step in um, health promotion. You know, it's like when we maybe stop eating sugar, right? Or when we stop eating processed meats for a little, or, you know, something uh, that we also do for our health. Um, so there are a lot of benefits from just taking a break, right? Um, from just reducing uh, the amount of alcohol that we drink, there are benefits to that. Um, and the longer we do that, say a month, right? 30 days, we know that habits, um, you know, uh, it takes about 30 days to build a, a new habit and uh, to break an old habit. Um, when we think about behavior change, um, there are um, a lot of benefits and um, some are person specific. You know, your relationships can improve um, your own, um, you know, work life could improve, you know, so that could be very specific. But overall, we know that, you know, people experience better sleep when they take a break. Um, they, their memory improves, um, they have a better, um, you know, cardiovascular system, right? you you can breathe better, your, your body's in better shape. You can build up, um, that exercise if you're taking a break, um, uh, which improves weight loss, um, and just, you know, taking the cal calories from alcohol out, you, you might see some weight loss right there. Um, but yeah, in general, after four weeks, you know, taking that longer break, um, you can see a lot of benefits. So sounds like a month is about the recommended time, but is there still benefits to taking a break for a shorter amount of time or a different kind of break? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And you can just, you know, reducing um, from, you know, and, and, you may have friends that do this too, Julianne, you know, I'm not going to drink during the week, right? I, I, instead of leaving work and going out and meeting colleagues at a pub, I'm, I'm going to um, go to the gym or I'm going to go for a walk or I'm going to go to take a class, right? I'm going to fill my time with something else during the week, Monday through Thursday or Sunday through Thursday. And maybe, you know, just, and of course there are benefits to that, right? Again, you're reducing the amount of intake, but you're also building other healthy habits um, and seeing how to interact and socialize without um, what some people call a social, um, what, what is it called? Like if you have a, like a, um, shoot. Social obligation? 
kind of no when when you know if you have a drink it makes it easier to talk um uh, oh it's like social lubricant, lubricant right yes yeah, so like a good you hear that sometimes a social lubricant right so you're going out and doing things and learning that you can be social without drinking right you can have fun you can engage with friends you can do things something for yourself and and during periods of life sometimes that's not clear um and so um yeah and and then also just even reducing from you know having three drinks down to two you know counting those drinks and 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 being aware of reducing them but there's definitely the most um, benefit if you do it for a full month and that's why you see these these you know sober october dry january right really these chunks of time where we're um seeing the most benefits and one of those is really that that amount of time helps your brain reconnect pathways, like rewire a little bit to really learn that the benefits of not using a substance is good, right? There are benefits. Um, in the short term, the brain doesn't rewire that quickly. So it needs a little bit more time to really see those benefits and outweigh the short term desire and the short term, you know, connection of, well, I know right now in this moment, if I had a drink, you know, I might feel, you know, looser, or I might feel happier in this moment, right? Um, but so it takes a while to have your brain say, actually, there are other things that I can do that will actually give me that benefit. Um, so, and that's when you see the clearer skin, and you see, you know, the better memory and the neurological benefits too, of just even like, um, remembering words and speaking better and all those things. So um, uh, 30 days is really kind of the magic number of seeing those benefits. Um, you know, if if that's really, it's going to be hard, right? Like, it's hard. If 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 using um, substances, if, 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 you know, using alcohol is part of your pretty regular habit, um, you know, cooking with a glass of wine or, you know, okay, I'm, I told you I was middle age, right? Like, um, so, or meeting friends after work. Um, if that's part of just your regular thing, it's making change is hard, right? Um, so there are, there's support out there. And if it's really hard, again, if your body is, is rejecting that break, if you're feeling sick, if you're having symptoms of um, withdrawal, um, uh, you know, that um, you should get assistance and, and not try to do this on your own. Um, we'll get to, to that in a second. But So yeah, yeah sounds like um, a month is awesome. But, you know, taking a break for any amount of time is still beneficial. Especially, mm -hmm. I really like not drinking during the week. Um, I know a lot of restaurants now are offering uh, more mocktail options, which is fun because yeah. I think um, we said this offline, Julie, but alcohol is the only drug that people will question why you're not using. If you <laughs> say that about anything else, people are totally understanding. But if you choose not to have a beer at a function, people are like, oh, like what's wrong? And it's like, it's really, it's really none of their business. And there should be non-alcoholic options for everybody. Absolutely, yeah. And I do, I think there is that a little bit of that, um, you know, and I'll tell you, I've had a friend be like, well, that's no fun, right? And that made me feel like, okay, am I no fun if I don't drink, you know, at a party? Right? So there is that feeling of what, make, what, what makes this hard. And, um, you know, there are some resources for that <clears throat> to be, um, you know, I've done this a few times and um, some of the times I've needed a little support um, and, you know, um, there are apps out there that can help you go through this, right? Can, can kind of guide you. And I'm somebody who, whenever I change behavior, I need like some pretty strict guidelines. It's not really easy for me. Um, and so some of these apps are really helpful to, Number one, figure out, you know, what is difficult about this? So kind of exploring that relationship a little bit and then also just giving that positive reinforcement that, yay, good job, you're doing it. Um, you know, I'm not endorsing any of these apps and you can just Google like best um, 
you know, um, I don't know what I Googled, like sober apps or best apps to help with reducing drinking. And you'll get a whole bunch of them. Some of them are just reducing. Like um, there was one, it was Cutback Coach before, and now it's, I think, Sunny Day, you know, and that will send you a text, you know, and say, how you doing? Do you have any, you know, and, the, and you can text a coach and, and it's a nice back and forth. Um, there's another one that can help with all habits called Streaks. Um, and that I've been using because frankly, during the pandemic, you know, um, some normal habits went to the wayside, right? So these streaks are now like reminding me, did you floss your teeth? <laughs> did, did you, you know, and so that can be like, it, you can set it to say, you know, I only want to drink this much and it, and it'll send you and and if you're not doing, if you're not drinking, it'll like reward you. So that's kind of fun. Reframe is another one. Stop drinking. I mean, there's so many of them. Um, there's one that will allow you to track how much money you're not spending on alcohol, um, which is a good motivator and a, an eye opener. If you really show how much um, you spend on alcohol, it can be a, 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 an awakening. Maybe you could save for that unnecessary treat that you, you know, always wanted, but didn't think you could afford. So there are apps that can help with that. Um, and there's the, uh, there are books for those of you who also want to take a break from screens too, you know, um, um, there's one, a great one that I've sent to so many people called 30 day sobriety solution. And it just, you know, it really helps th with this. Um, what is your fear? You know, if you stop that thing where, you know, your a friend might be like, why aren't you drinking? Oh, you're no fun anymore. You know, that that like what are what do you lose by not drinking? You know, what what's at risk by stopping? Um, so there are some good questions around that. And then what do you gain? You know, um, so there are supports out there, um, you know, in the formal way um, when you when you try to do this. Absolutely. Do you have any tips or strategies that you've found helpful? Well, I think one of the ones you just mentioned, like the mocktails, you know, being able to find a delicious beverage, you know, whether it's at home or at, when you go out um, and um, tea, I, you know, uh, drinking tea or a, another um, something that is flavorful and, and um, kind of, um, I don't know, has a, yeah, is pleasant when you drink it. Relaxing um, qualities, yeah. A relaxing quality, yes, without the alcohol. Um, that's really helpful. Um, it, you know, um, replacing that, like if you were normally to go and, and have a glass of wine or a beer or a cocktail, you know, just maybe making a cup of tea instead. Um, you know, finding those other things to do with your friends and your social network? You know, is it going for a walk? Is it going to the movies? Is it going bowling? Is it, um, you know, some other more structured activity where you can socialize and see your friends rather than like, hey, let's just, just come over and hang out, right? Um, and go to bed early, <laughs> you know, not trying to push it, being like, it's okay to go to bed now. I don't have to stay up so late, right? Um, going to bed early can be really helpful in getting that better sleep. Um, um, yeah, just finding those other ways to relax, you know, um, laying down on the floor and just turning on some music and stretching, um, taking up a new hobby to keep those hands busy. You know, if, if sometimes you're like, what am I, you know, what can I do? Um, maybe some art and coloring and other hobbies, you know, we've seen those um, take a rise, that mindfulness. So um, clean, clean your house. My house is always cleaner when I'm, <laughs> you know, um, when take a break. So lots, lots of things to keep you busy. What do you, do you have any thoughts? I think all of those are great tips. Um, I'm actually realizing now that I may have already accidentally been participating in Sober October. <laughs> Um, I don't think I've had anything to drink yet this month. Um, so maybe. I think maybe I'll try to push it till Halloween. Nice. 
Um, but I think that it's really a great idea to try to just take a break because especially like, I mean, in college and in certain social settings, like the culture around drinking is so like, you don't want to feel left out if you're not drinking. Um, and I know it can be like socially isolating, but it's, it's good to change the narrative around that. It shouldn't be socially isolating. And just as like a younger person, like money saved is a huge draw for people. I mean, if you don't have to spend money on a bar tab, if you're not spending money on an Uber because, you know, you obviously can't drive to and from the bar or the party location, then you're saving money there on transportation. And then it's really a gift to wake up the next day too and just feel really good and not deal with like a nasty hangover or whatever. Anxiety um, is a new term I learned recently that I think yeah. um, others might be able to relate to just having like a weird eerie feeling of anxiety after drinking the night before and just really feeling refreshed. Um, So I think it's something everyone should try, whether you take a break for a week or you go the whole month. Absolutely. Um, Are you participating in Sober October, Julie? I am. So do you want to, and having a buddy is another tip, right? It's always really fun to have a buddy. Um, And, and that's actually, I think the first time um, that book that I mentioned 30 days to um, 30 day sobriety solution. Um, I had a friend who was really kind of struggling and wanted to take a break. And I was like, I'll do it with you, even though she was far away. Um, and what we did, I sent her, we both got copies of the book. We did it together. We talked we texted, you know, having that friend to say, God, I'm bored. <laughs> like, what can I do? You know, cause sometimes people drink out of boredom. Um, sometimes people drink out of loneliness. Um, so having that buddy to say, you know, to do it with, um, and, and so we can text each other, Julianne, if you want. Sounds good, About- Julie. I might take you <laughs> up on that. The Julie and Julianne, um, Sober October challenge. Um, yeah. There you go. Our names just fit so well. We have to do it now. <laughs> um, but there are a couple other resources we wanted to share, um, there is, we do have a take a break New Hampshire um, through um, one of the, um, what is it? Through the binge free 603, binge free 603. campaign. Um, yeah, there's a whole take a break New Hampshire thing. Um, and um, so that's great. Um, Julianne already sh- shared the two on one. Um, and then uh, we have some information around alcohol use and um, on the partnership website. And so we have some fact sheets and other information about um, the effects of alcohol and also, um, you know, symptoms of withdrawal um, so that if you have somebody, um, you or somebody, you know, um, need some additional assistance, um, there are resources there as well um, of what to do um, if, if that is an issue that you are seeing or having. Um, so please explore that. Um, and again, we just want to thank you for being here today with us on this um, dreary day. And we hope that um, you have a great rest of the month. And maybe we'll see you next Friday to talk about Red Ribbon Week, um, which is a drug um, awareness week that um, the DEA um, uh you know, has sponsored for, for years um, to increase awareness of, um, of drug use and the negative effects on um, individuals and communities. So um, we'll be talking here next week about some of those efforts and what they mean for New Hampshire and the communities that we live in. So um, have a great weekend and um, I don't know, let us know if you take a break. Thanks everyone. Have a good weekend.